Hello and welcome to Nobody Meets Somebody, the podcast where two comedians who are currently nobody meet somebody who is famous. My name is Tanvir Arora. And I'm Mary Picarazzi. In today's episode, we got to talk to Mani Chahan. You might know her better as a judge on Food Network's Chop. She's a James Beard award-winning chef. She owns four restaurants, a few breweries, all in Nashville, Tennessee, where she calls home. Today's episode was great. It was amazing talking to Monique, and you will know that I am actually moving in with her tomorrow. <laughs> Supposedly. Tam Beard decided to fangirl in the middle of our episode. She said yes. She's okay with it. She did. Well, don't ruin it for them. Let them find out for themselves how you forced this to happen. <laughs> Well, definitely follow her on Instagram at Mani Chohan um, for interesting recipes and all about food. Well, this episode, uh, we talked a lot about, of course, food and restaurants and her life becoming a chef in America. Um, the conversation was great. It almost felt like your family. It was, it was really nice. Yeah, it was really good to hear how she's been taking care of her employees during uh, COVID. I mean, obviously, everyone's facing this across the country. Um, she owns so many more restaurants and breweries so she has a large number of employees she has to make sure have something and uh, she's an amazing individual it was absolutely inspiring to interview her all right before we move to our awesome segment of nosy neighbors let's take a minute to do a shout out to mr larry garza happy, happy birthday. birthday we both couldn't make your uh parade to birthday parade today because we were interviewing but uh we definitely want to let you know that you have been in our thoughts and our prayers, and you are one red dude. So have a good birthday. All right, now it's time for a segment that we like to call Nosy Neighbors. Nosy Neighbors. Oh, I've got an interesting one for you. So, you know, with COVID and quarantining and being in your homes, not going outside, but some people are crazy and they've been partying and they've been going to bars and stuff. So recently, last week, my neighbor decides to throw a party at night. And there's like cars lined up outside his house and they were like partying, really, really partying. And it didn't seem like they were family. There was a lot of different people. Wow. It was a party party in his backyard. We have a Facebook group for our subdivision. So I post there as a joke saying, you know, the cases are rising and there's no place in the hospital. And my neighbor on top of that decides to throw a party. But the sad part is he didn't invite me. And please tell, me, please tell me he saw the post. So that's what the thing was. A lot of people laughed, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not on Facebook. But about midnight, I get a notification on my phone um, saying, hey, you're welcome to the party too. Oh. <laughs> he's on Facebook, and he's part of the group. And <laughs> it's made things awkward, you know? I don't know. And <laughs> That's awesome. That is hilarious. Did you go over? No. Hell no. <laughs> Yeah, that's sad. <clears throat> I know. That's cool. What do you got? Uh, so I went through my awesome Nextdoor app. And within uh, the Nextdoor app, you have items you can sell and buy. And mm -hmm. I found an interesting section of used piercings. In particular, belly button piercings. Yuck. I'm just going to say, if it's been through your skin, I don't want it. I'm pretty sure it's unsanitary to sell them. But there was quite a few... And they were like $8 for three piercings. I don't know if that's a good deal, but that still seemed really, I can't believe there was more than one person that was selling them, first of all. Yeah, I'm very, very perturbed by this. I, I, <laughs> there's yes. a market for this, and then people, I would oh, rather yeah. pick up a couch from, like, from the street, which is <laughs> ridden with bed bugs, but I would not buy those nail rings. Well, this is how stupid I am. I saw the three piercings, and I was like, how do they fit together? And I was like, oh, wait, they're three separate piercings. My bad. I'm just like, I'm like trying to figure out like a jigsaw puzzle, how they all fit together. And I'm, yeah, that's what I spent a good two minutes on before I realized everything that was happening with this. It was, yeah, it's gross. Are they still no, available? No. I actually need to buy them and then probably just give it out to my neighbor and he can give it out <laughs> to the people at the party. Like, that's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that seems like the right kind of crowd for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think we're ready to start our show. What do you think? Let's do it. This is going to be a fun All right, one. let's talk to Monique. Hey, Monique, thank you so much for joining us. This is great. Thank you. 
Oh my God, I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this. Because I, I think we're going to create a lot of trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the, the only plan. way to start it, yeah. That's the plan. <laughs> like so many like legal documents and legal cases and it, it'll be fun. It'll spice up the 2020, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I swear to God, you think 2020 needs more spicing up? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think it's masaledar enough. I swear <laughs> to God, we don't need any more. This is it. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we'll try not to create trouble, but you know, things happen. You know. Um, there's like so much to ask you, so much to discuss. I'm like super excited, by the way. This is this is almost unreal for both of us, right? Oh like, my this god, is, this is you, great. You guys are um, too kind. Before we start, I did watch your Instagram story. By the way, I stalk you a lot. You already know that. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody does finally. <laughs> so the missile power that turned out to be great. It did. It did. Though I, to tell you the truth, I also made the power, uh, which uh, is the bread, and I was not happy with the bread because um, right in between the proofing and uh, you know the kneading, I had to get on a Zoom call, so it got <laughs> overproofed. And yeah, so uh, people kept on. They're like, "When are you putting the recipe of the power?" I'm like, "You know what? I need to perfect it. I'm not going to." put it till the time i'm not happy with it so oh, as simple as that you gotta wait we'll still i'll still believe it is perfect <laughs> i'm not going to question that um so okay we'll start off with your childhood and how it all started so we read <laughs> sorry say that again as it tells about your parents <laughs> <laughs> oh you oh. started cooking at a really really early age right like really early, as compared to any other oh, normal yes, person oh yes absolutely yeah. Uh, was there even like an ounce of doubt that you won't become a chef? You know, I mean, in my mind, it was always that I wanted to be a chef. But then I also grew up in India. Uh, and this was, I'm, I'm talking about 20 years back, where the only two acceptable careers were to be a doctor or an engineer. And we got up, uh, I mean, and, you know, I was brought up in a community where they were professionals, like my dad, um, he was an engineer. So mm -hmm. everybody around us, you know, they were engineers and all the kids, that's what they were working towards to be doctor or engineer. And over here, I'm like, I want to be a chef. And after, you know, um, uh, then we, you would know what uh, you would know that there is a word in Punjabi which is kamli, which right. means you are like crazy that that you could even think of that, and and that's what my neighbors thought. And I was I was very fortunate that my parents said that do whatever you want, just make sure that you are the best at it. So um, in a country where being a chef was barely acceptable, being a female was barely acceptable, mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to be a female chef, which was just not acceptable. So. Um, um, I, I think that I decided that I wanted to be a chef more because of the naysayers, because mm -hmm. there were people like, you can't do it. I'm like, really? You're telling me I can't do it? I'll show you. So um, <laughs> I think that's pretty much how it started. Yeah. So I'm Mexican-American and I am a firm believer that Indian culture and Mexican culture are so similar. Uh, growing up in, in with a Mexican-American family, the kitchen is the central part of the family and how you cook and the emotion you convey comes through. What kind of family traditions influenced you and kind of carry on through your cooking? Oh, my God, Mary, you will so get this, right? I still remember each and every, um, you know, summer break or winter break, you know, we, we would be with our cousins and uncles and aunts and, um, you know, breakfast. What should we make for breakfast? Oh, okay. When we are having breakfast, the conversation would be, okay, what would we have for lunch? <laughs> and during the lunch, we would be like, so what would we have for dinner? Like, our entire world revolved around food. And, that's, and that to me is the interesting conversation, right? If it revolves around food, why isn't this given more importance to? So to me, I mean, food has been a very integral part, be it cooking with my grandmoms and you know um i still remember my uh you know uh, my dad's mom when she would come to visit us during summer holidays and we had two mango trees in our backyard this yeah. is in india and uh, i was not allowed to climb it because i was the tomboy and my mom is like you can't do that and of course i never listened to her <laughs> but this was the only time that i was allowed to climb the trees because you know when dadi my my, my grandma would come she would be like climb the tree, break all the mangoes, and then we would, you know, I would pluck the mangoes. And, you know, the one thing which I remember is that the sap of a raw mango is very, like, 
it can burn your face and yeah. it's like really it's got a lot of acid in it and i remember entire summer holidays i would have like marks all <laughs> over me right <laughs> who cares and with you know we would um take all the mangoes that we had plucked to our the um to our uh, farmers market where there was this old lady with a really sharp knife and when you're cutting the mango you have to cut it through the stone and the stone is very hard so you can't cut it at home and um we would go my grandmom and me we would go we would have it cut then we would bring it back and then put it out in the sun on you know white bed sheets and then let it sun dry and then she would add spices to it and my mouth is watering while i'm just thinking <laughs> about those recipes right or every time we would go to punjab to see her she would like make she would make these amazing meat dishes right which a uh, meat in india like we would have vegetarian and meat would be um, it's a luxury right? right and she would make the uh, atta or the dough and then send my cousins and me with some money and the atta to the the corner of the street where there would be this guy who had a tandoor and he would make the rotis for us in the tandoor and it just like the most incredible uh, uh, you know i mean i could i don't know how much time you guys have i can spend like hours and hours just talking about my how much like you know my family and my neighbors and my friends influenced my my journey of food but you know what the most important uh, part for me was i realized very early on that food is one of the biggest connectors right Right. you can just connect with people over food and that i think is something till date which is why i am in food it's like like even now right like the way you reached out to me like uh, over food and you know right. you've got yeah. these really funny instagrams uh, you know all these uh, and and we connected over food and that's why food is i think it's very important to me just because it's the biggest connector it's it's the most honest connector on this planet I completely agree with that. Also, we got a lot of time, and if you want to make us something, we'll be really happy. <laughs> and both are like, <laughs> I really want to have aloo paratha with like my mango pickle right now. Hey, breakfast me aloo ke parathe, and side me mango da char. I with some dahi and homemade. Like the butter has to be homemade butter. Like you know that white makhan. Oh God, it's like so good. I'm out of watering just talking about it. <laughs> Mary, you want to just fly to Nashville? Like, I think I think things are better now. Like, there's no virus. <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen. Oh, with some of my like my my friends just uh, like one of my team members just came back and said that he's never felt safer than he, when he was in the plane because everything was so. He's like, I feel safer on a plane than when I go to the gas station right around the corner. And I'm like, yeah, I'm knowing the gas station you must go to, I can figure it out. But yeah. <laughs> I'm booking a flight. Uh, is it there tomorrow? Does, does that work? <laughs> But Anka is coming right up. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Oh, um, don't, don't tell me all that. I will do it. I, I, I know. <laughs> Done. So, if you if you weren't a chef, what would you be? Like, if this didn't work out, or if this, <laughs> or there was no question about if it, and suddenly died. <laughs> there's no option like i am what, i i became what i wanted to be but i felt really if i really if it was something else i don't think that there is a profession which has been invented yet but i would be a professional jewelry wearer <laughs> not designer wearer as a model like somebody who could model. just not even a model like somebody who could just wear jewelry and just live like in that <laughs> like as much bling on on me as possible <laughs> that's awesome but um, so you did you graduated from cia not the not the fbi cia the other one um, hey hey the hey, food hey, one hey, hey. that's your job by the way yes. hey b- by the way just to let you know there was an fbi at the cia which was the food beverage institute at the culinary institute of america just to let you know wow well, okay i am nice. cooler than a chef <laughs> <laughs> oh but you you graduated you got all your like top scores but you did struggle uh with sponsorship which is probably every other immigrant's journey i did i did the same a lot of my friends struggled to that how did that shape you what what worked what didn't what what happened i i think what it really shaped me i mean so uh till the time i was you know i did my undergrad in india and i came here to the cia all i wanted to be was a pastry chef because you know growing up in india uh, pastries really like especially 
the gorgeous French pastries that you see were really not, you didn't see so much of it. So I wanted to do something, I wanted to create a niche. I wanted to do something which really wasn't as prevalent, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so till the time I graduated from CIA, all I was concentrating was on baking and pastry arts. Till the time I graduated and then I realized that even though I was at the top of my class, people wouldn't touch me with a barge pole because of sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So at this time, my uncle and aunt were opening an Indian restaurant. And literally, that was the last thing I wanted to do was at an Indian restaurant. I'm like, okay, let me just, you know, wet my feet and see how things go. And boy, it was such an eye-opening experience because, you know, when I came to the CIA, I was the only Indian on campus for the majority of the time I was over there. Oh. And people were like... Oh, Indian food. And we went, this is upstate New York. We went to the only Indian restaurant over there. Eight ninety five. all you can eat buffet. And people took the first bite and they're like, yeah, uh, <laughs> th that's good. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I And this was not the Indian food that, that I grew up with or right. the Indian food that we used to in India. Right. So I think that's literally when there was, you know, um, a fire which was lit under my uh, actually, I should have asked you guys if we were allowed to swear or not. But anyway, go for so, it. Okay. Go for so, it. So, so literally, I, I and that is so when I started working at this Indian restaurant at my uncle and aunt's place, I just realized what an incredible potential there was, and also the fact that you know Indian food is so beautiful. It's so seasonal. It's everything. Like when I came here, everybody was talking about farmers market, and I'm like, oh, what's farmers market? And I went over there, and I'm like. <laughs> this is a sabzi mandi. This is the only market that I know of. Like, that's the only market that, you know, my, my da dad and I, every Sunday on his scooter, we would go to. Or um, seasonal cooking. Seasonal cooking, there was no other option. It was red <laughs> carrots available for one week in an entire year in December. And that's the only time, you know, mom would make gajar halwa, which is this carrot pudding right. with, with red carrots. That's how we we were raised. So to me, um, I really, at that time, I really started thinking about how I can use my my talents and my, you know, uh, expertise to bring to the forefront or, or to show light on the beauty of Indian food. And I think it really, um, it was a struggle. It was a, it was a big struggle. But I am the kind of person who always finds the opportunity in a struggle. And, and that's what I did. I found a niche for myself. I found a voice for myself. I found a voice for Indian food. And that's what I did. I just went after it. That's awesome. And we're proud that you did that. Thank you. So that, that go ties in perfectly with, um, I want to bring up your TED talk. Uh, your <laughs> mantra, your mantra that has four simple words is exactly the way you're approaching. Like you could have taken the situation and just completely you know, had an attitude about it, been difficult, but you turned it to a complete opportunity. Your mantra, if you, those of you that haven't watched it, go watch it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. That has gotten you exactly where you are right now. Um, how do you anticipate using that post-quarantine? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, Mary, it's so funny that you're saying this. Um, yeah, uh, my first email address ever was my Hotmail uh, account. And my tagline over there is nothing ventured, nothing gained, which I wrote I would say 99 when I got my first, e I mean, like probably before you kids were born and oh, literally, I, <laughs> I mean, literally it's, it's been a mantra that, I, that has, you know, there are some words that are empty words and then there are some words which are like, they, they stick to you. And this is what nothing venture, nothing gained has been. It's like, um, I am a strong believer of jump in the deep, you know, jump in the deep end and you learn how to swim. And it has worked for me. Uh, I I strongly believe that um, that there are opportunities which come in each and every aspect in life. You are stupid if you don't take it. What's the most that will happen? You'll 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 fail. Well, if you don't take it, you've already failed. Right. So to me, I'm like, you know what? Just just go with the flow of it. And there have been so many times that I've I've, I've taken this opportunity, and it's not worked for me. But it's fine. I have never lived with the regret that what if. And that, I think, is very, very important. 
But would you say you also learned from those instances that may not have been successful? You learned a lot more from those. Actually, to me, I think my biggest learning experiences have been from my failures, which have been a lot, uh, than from my successes. Uh, you know, when you get when something succeeds, you take it for granted. Um, and this entire COVID thing, like, you know, it's not coming out of it. It is surviving it, right? It's been, it's been an absolutely emotional roller coaster. I can't tell you, like, especially when this whole thing started and we knew that it was going to hit us and I was traveling. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, it took us five years to build your team. It's 250 people and this is your family, right? right? You, you're in this industry and this is your family and the fact that you've got to, you know, let them go and you don't know if you'll be able to get them back. And it's this profound sense of loss. The fact that you've built something and then you just have to let it go. Um, the fact that your entire team is so understanding like they were like yeah we understand and I'm like no I just need you to swear at me I need you to tell me like you know fuck off like you know <laughs> I, I need you to swear at me but I don't want you to be understanding because you feel you know you want that anger in you you don't want that anguish in you and 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 just surviving COVID I think is going to be one of the biggest accomplishments that all of us are going to go through because on the other side you know that you know that you're going to succeed. Right now, we have no freaking idea what's going on. The fact that we've opened, everybody is coming and, you know, there, uh, there are lines and we are following the instructions and then, boom, the cases are going up. And the thing is that we are so used to being in control of our lives and COVID has made us realize that we are very vulnerable and we are not in control of anything is what is the most frustrating part for me and for a lot of people who are you know type a personalities right yeah it's, it's been it's been super hard I, I can i can't even imagine the situation that you were in to let people go and then because yeah you're right they become part of your family and then it just it's super weird it's crazy i mean i one of my friends like really dear friend of mine who's a chef uh, uh rally chiti kumar um, like there was a day that we were literally, I, I was in my closet. I locked myself in my closet with my pillows and a glass of wine. And we both are texting each other photographs of us drinking. And we're like, what? And then right. after, after an hour, like, you know, the kids are like, mommy, are you okay? And I'm like, okay. And then both of us yeah. were like, okay, this is it. We've done it. Yeah. We've indulged in self-pity. Get up and go out. There's so many people who are relying on you. And just come on, like just you know, step up, step right. up, because so you, for those you, you owe it. For those of you that aren't aware, obviously, uh, many you own four restaurants, a variety of breweries. Um, you've recently had to have the conversation that a lot of restauranteurs had to have with their staff, um, <clears throat> and letting them go, and, and them of course understanding. But you did something pretty significant with your staff. You opened your pantries. You opened your fridges and let them take as much food as they needed for their families and that speaks volumes you know what i don't think it speaks volumes i think as as um, anybody would do that uh, you know what we are to me i think one of the biggest things was that um we are in the food industry how can people who are working with us um mm -hmm even think about facing food insecurity, right? I mean, growing up in India, I've seen food insecurity. You, you see it on the streets, right? Over here, it's not as prevalent over here, but it does exist over here, right? And and we've been working so hard. We were very fortunate that we worked with some incredible vendors who, you know, I mean, there was a day that um, there was one of our vendors uh, who dropped off, uh, dropped 550 cases of fresh produce because it was going to go bad. And we put it in our uh, parking lot and we just told people, not only from who worked with us, but hospitality industry overall over the city. But then there were people who were stopping by and they're like, can we take some? We we're like, of course, just go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we worked with one Genoway, which is which provides food security for um you know, Middle Tennessee, especially students, because there are a lot of students who would be without food. Uh, you know, National Food Project. So Whatever we can in a small way, we do. Uh, I know that there are other people who do a lot of 
bigger meaningful impacts but to me i believe that small impacts re you know result in larger impacts and that's what it's all about and that's great you you've been doing that now it's got a little little heavy i'm going to lighten up lighten the conversation <laughs> a little bit i'm going to ask you some fun stuff right now you had to do a, like a food collaboration with some other celebrity chef uh what would that look like who would that be and what would you do with oh my god i like a, i collaborate with which is like one of my favorite things to do and one of my pet projects in uh, is to just travel to different countries meet chefs uh see what they cook and then present it with my flair which is what my my book like you know uh flavors of my world is all about it's taking favorite dishes from countries that i love and then putting my desi twist on it so right. i can co- collaborate with anybody and i think that's the fun part about it just like to be like can i do this and then i do it and then i put my own like impossible <laughs> desi twist on it and most of the times it's delicious so that's cool so falling on the dad what has been your favorite indian food and your favorite twist on it like whatever you uh, but indian you food know, okay so my favorite indian food is uh, by default what a lot of people is khichdi okay <clears throat> which is um it's rice and lentils and it's spiced no. and yeah i know and wh- why i love it is it's because it's li- like the savory porridge right um and um every time i would you know we would fall sick that's what mom would make so so it's the ultimate comfort it's the chicken soup for the soul for me <laughs> right for a lot of indians it is and what i have done is i've made a really fun twist on it i've made khichdi aran chinis so basically you make a khichdi and then you know you go ahead and you make these croquettes and then you bread it and you deep fry it so um Uh, th- that has been and you serve it with this raita so that has been one of my favorite riffs on a comfort food see that i eat khichdi by itself i probably would not <laughs> that's because you haven't had the khichdi that i've made that's on my mom that's, that's on my mom that's, that's right. the <laughs> risotto man like think about it like people are like oh my god risotto risotto khichdi that's our risotto so any time my wife makes khichdi i'm i'm, I'm just like and i know mary you probably won't get this this is punjabi but i'll explain it's like it could be maro wala khana banaya hai many like you know it's like it's just people it's a food for sick people i don't want to eat that i'm, I'm healthy i want to some i want something nice so but then but then you take it and then you just go ahead and put a absolutely amazing tarka on it and then you are like oh god i can just have bowls of this and then like literally <laughs> i have made like khichdi in terms of like you know seared scallops on it or like shrimp and grits so you put shrimp on it like i i'm telling you you can just uh, then we're you know what when we meet i'm making khichdi for you and i'm going to change your perception of khichdi it's, it's a I'm deal taking, i'm taking it personally now <laughs> <laughs> when we meet as in tomorrow right i'm yes, going to apply exactly. okay <laughs> The aloo parantas. I put the aloo for boiling. Don't you worry. Perfect. <laughs> Can I just move in with you? Like, that... <laughs> Please come on in. We've got we've got a couple of spare rooms. Come on over. Oh, uh, we can sell the house. I think we're moving with money. <laughs> done. 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 So I've heard pineapple is your least favorite food to cook with. That's not true. But well, I, I, there's I, an I, Iron I, Chef special. It's my, it's my nemesis. It's my nemesis. <laughs> Fair enough. It's fair. Nemesis. Yes. Well, so then, as your nemesis, let's say you were a contestant on Chopped, and it was in the basket. What are you thinking about making? It depends on which round it is. What are you giving me? Appetizer, entree, or dessert? Let's Come go on. appetizer. Let's go appetizer. Let's go appetizer. As, a, as an appetizer. Oh, I would actually. What I would do is now that I've become smart enough, I would actually take. I would. take the pineapple depends on what the rest of the ingredients are there's so many ifs and buts over here right like come on you have to give me okay give me the rest of the ingredients all right i'm giving you i'm putting you on the spot I'm, you I'm right doing it. The bring spot. it i'm putting you on the spot bring it i love this this is great this is me and tabir every day this is perfect uh i'm giving you pecans i'm mm-hmm. giving you uh eggplant pineapple mm-hmm. and one more thing i just say rye bread Oh god so simple I'm going to make I'm going to make eggplant pakoras <laughs> with a pineapple with a pineapple chutney and the pakora is going to be dredged in the rye bread uh, crumbs along with pecan in it so simple Dang. done I don't god. even need 20 minutes for it this <laughs> thing boom god the yeah. I'll is... try that I'll eat that <laughs> I need that I'm going to eat that you tomorrow will, by the way <laughs> You will you will you will eat it and not chop me I promise you about that <laughs> I love it. This is great. 
<laughs> We're getting sass on our own show. This is phenomenal. Yeah, this is kind this of This is how you know. This is how you know family. <laughs> this is what family does. This is exactly the level of family. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I had really expected like money to be like, oh, I don't know what to do. And there'll be like a pause and she'll think about it. But yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, fix it. I'll fix it in editing like <laughs> please you're like da 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 <laughs> so speaking of like um putting some twists to indian food um fusion foods is like one thing that i really like like go to some restaurant and that's what i like about your restaurant like take indian food and just put a twist to it and it's something really new and something refreshing um uh, but what is like a definite no no as a fusion, like something that you try to do in Indian food or someone's done it, but that's an absolute no-no. To me, anything which doesn't taste good is a complete no-no, right? Uh, like, you know, when you're, when you're intentionally trying, you know, there are some things which are, uh, which are fun, which are witty, but at times they are things which just don't make sense. And most of them are things that I have tried because I've tried pretty much everything. I tried, okay, I tried, you know, I'll tell you what is the, the stupidest thing that I've ever done is that I tried to do, you know, a bagel and lox. Okay. <laughs> I, I tried that with medu vada. Don't try it. It is <laughs> disgusting. Like, just to let you know, um, which is like the savory donuts. So, um, you know, if there's something stupid out there, I pretty much have tried it. And I, um, I I'm, I'm, I'm actually blessed that I have an incredible team around me. Um, and uh, my husband, Vivek, is one of the, the harshest critics that I ever know. Uh, he doesn't, you know, he pulls no punches. He's like, yeah, this sucks. And, and, and I probably, I'm like, okay, I won't talk to you for two days uh, while I'm nursing my <laughs> ego. I'm like, what do you know about food? And I'm like, dang, he does know. We went to the same school. So, so yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've, there are so many there are so many things i think in the end of the day you have to really rely on your senses of taste and smell and you know sight and sound and if all of it kind of works it will work oh uh, follow up on that though oh this is going to be easy to ask this question he's been dying to ask this question no that's not the one that's, that's and i'm dying to answer that question <laughs> that's the one i want you to ask from this, this, this is no this is on top of my mind i'll get to that mary but this is just something <laughs> da, da, so, close da. To me. <laughs> so chai just chai a lot of people like to spice it up put masala i absolutely hate it the only chai that i can have is like simple uh water maybe sugar but not even sugar cardamom at times fennel seeds and milk that is where i draw the line i do not like ginger or any kind what's your take on chai or masala chai oh god first of all uh, thank you so much for not calling it chai tea uh, that like that like that and curry powder like literally raises my that, blood i'll pressure. get into curry powder through, i am going to get into the curry powder <laughs> like i'm like Bleh. um i i personally you know what uh, growing up in a punjabi household you know uh, a chai has more milk than than right. than chai in it which used to, which really kind of pisses me off. But to me, I, um, when I have my morning tea, it is with really very little milk and just chai, right? Uh, I, okay. I don't even go with cardamom. Uh, I, on occasion, do enjoy the masala chai with, you know, with all the, the you know, uh, the tam jam or the you know the additions to it, but yeah. but I cannot, but I cannot do that on a regular basis. To me, the biggest no no about chai is the milk, right? Uh, it has to be just a touch of milk, right? right. Uh, I you know on the sets they would always pull my leg because you know the PAs would come and ask me that what would you like? I'm like, can I have some, you know, can I have some tea, um, you know, with a spot of milk? And they they would just find it really funny. And I'm like, no, 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 you guys don't realize that spot is a technical term, right? Because you can't put more than that. Um, <laughs> but that being said, my favorite chai of all time is you know when you go to India. Mm -hmm. And they have those street vendors who are selling chai in the earthen pots, the kasodas. Right. This, and it has milk in it. And it has been like boiled, like that same tea has been boiled <laughs> like 5 million times. Like, you know, there's no, no, no flavor of the tea left. But that hot tea in that earthen pot, that smell of the earth is just a, a, a flavor that as a chef, as much as I try to recreate, I'll never be able to recreate. It's just in 
incredible. So that is the chai which, you know, if anybody asks me what chai is all about, that is what chai is all about. I completely agree with that. And I, I, and I'm glad we are on the same page. So I can definitely move in with you because had you said you love masala chai, <laughs> that would have been a deal breaker. Yeah, I would please have don't expect me. Please <laughs> don't expect me to make chai for you. You can come and make it yourself. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I will make chai. Know? Just, just adopt me. I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll, I'll clean the house. I'll do every, anything and everything you want. I just clean don't want the to house work. done. <laughs> done. <laughs> um. I'm at, can we just hold on for five minutes? I'll book my tickets and all that right now. So that it's, it's official. <laughs> Done. Absolutely. No, I'm glad you said that. And now to the question that Mary wanted me to ask, which is like... Da, 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 da. <laughs> so the curry powder. And I, back to what you said sometime back, like Indian food, the perception being just curry and naan. And to me, that kind of boils my blood. I get angry. It's what I don't even know what curry is, right? Um... So I'm glad that you and a lot, a lot of other chefs are kind of changing that perspective. And one thing that I, when I came to this country and I didn't see this that often that I used to see it in India, I want to actually normalize paneer as the vegetarian's protein. Like and anytime you go to an American restaurant, it's either mushrooms or something else that's, if you don't have meat, there's no paneer. My agenda of this life is to normalize paneer in America. Uh, is there something that you have uh, that you want to normalize or you want to change apart from, of course, that Indian food not being curry? You know, I, I think this is something which has come with um, which has come with time. The fact that normalizing Indian food will happen, right? Yeah. It it hasn't happened so far. There is that eight ninety five all you can eat buffet, which is Indian food, which it's not, which you know, which I know. Yeah, but normalization will come with time it will not happen today it will not happen tomorrow okay they are people like you like me uh, mary if you like indian food hopefully like you <laughs> who are going to normalize it right um you know think about england right england um mm -hmm. harrods has chicken tikka sandwich yeah. harrods chicken tikka sandwich right? right just think about just think about the placement right the um the the guys who sell the newspaper the newspaper kiosks mm -hmm. they sell samosas right. right right um chutney is is a normal like it is it's not out of the place right it it is a part of mm -hmm. um i mean butter chicken if you think about it or sorry chicken tikka masala right is something which is People people say that it was it was it was invented in England, right? right? Because England does have a history with India, right? And I think that with the number of chefs who are coming over here, we are normalizing it. Mm -hmm. We are normalizing the fact that Indian food is, um, you know, you you see small you see Indian ingredients which are making their place in mainstream American cuisine, and and it'll take time. I mean, come on. You right. get sushi in a gas station, though, of course, I wouldn't recommend anybody <laughs> buying that. <laughs> but the fact that sushi has been normalized or adopted so much in mainstream American cuisine that it's in a gas station, right. think about the profound impact. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, uh, my kids or their kids, you know, um, don't, don't face with, uh, you know, the question of, Chicken tiki marsala. Okay. <laughs> Do you know the number of people who come to the restaurant and they say that, can we have chicken tiki marsala? And I'm so oh, fortunate that I am uh, surrounded by smarter people than me who, um, because there are times where I'm like, this is it. Next time somebody asks for chicken tiki marsala, <laughs> I will take a piece of chicken, put marsala sauce on it and a tiki sauce, a, a tiki umbrella and I'll send it out. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, okay, dial back, dial back, right? But, in the end of the day, to me, the fact that they have made the effort of coming and trying food at an Indian restaurant, a lot of people who've never tried it before, I need to give them credit for it. And it will it will not happen overnight, I promise you. It is going to be one person at a time and one chef at a time who's going to convert everybody um, 
and it'll take time that's what it is uh, you know they are i mean come on like i had a misconception of american food when i came over here i thought it was all you know what archie like what jagged had like everything was pop pop cakes and you know that's what hamburgers and hot dogs were all american cuisine right. all i wanted to do was eat a twinkie in my life because i had seen it and then i came here and i'm like no american cuisine is so much more i had no idea about creole i, I mean it's all about awareness it's all right. about awareness right like i love to go to our comedy club and have some more so like i've been telling them to just can you just just buy frozen ones and serve that i it's easier it'll happen. it'll happen it'll happen just give it time so traveling is a huge part you've already spoken about how it really influences your tastes and what is the probably the most bizarre travel experience you've had uh i don't know if you'll talk it i mean if you'll call it bizarre but um you know a couple of years back actually around this time two years or three years back we were in peru um and uh i had gone i was working with american airlines so we had gone for a project but we tagged three days in front and we were like if you're going all the way to peru we've got to do machu picchu so it was uh, vivek and me and two of our friends and we landed in cusco and we went to urumbamba which is like you know it's the holy it's a sacred valley and we reach urumbamba and of course like from cusco to urumbamba there are four of us and i mean i know you guys will be surprised but i was the only person who was talking while the rest of these guys are like literally they're going green on their gills because it's like it was the altitude sickness right yeah, and i'm yeah. like la, 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 <laughs> right and of course we reach urum bamba and like you know uh, these guys and i'm still talking and and you know i go to the restroom and i am sick i throw up and then i'm like okay what do we do now and they're like we're going to take a nap so i i'm like okay i am here in you know in in peru i can't go to sleep it's such a waste right so i just walk over to the the local mercado which which just remind it was a village and it reminded me of a local like farmers market and i'm walking over and people like they haven't seen many indians so they thought i was from ecuador so they are trying to speak to me in spanish and the only spanish that i know is not fit for polite you know company <laughs> it's not so um so i'm like talking and you know let's say after like half an hour or so vivek found me i was selling potatoes with this old peruvian <laughs> lady while we were making these peruvian versions of aloo tikkis which are these croquettes and she just like i was just walking by and she just reminded me of my grandmom and we just started talking right and i don't even know what we spoke but i'm sitting with her and i'm we are selling potatoes and i'm making these aloo tikkis like these potato croquettes and again it just reminded me it was a very humbling experience because it reminded me that food is a conversation that even if you don't have if you don't know the same language you can still have a conversation over food and it could just it was just very very endearing it was just incredible um and yeah it just you know and then of course when we were in when i i went to brazil to sao paulo like you know we went to dom which is one of the most incredible restaurants and i'm eating ant and like the server is like the ant it 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 tastes like it's an amazonian ant it takes it tastes like lemongrass and before i'm eating it i'm like bs man like <laughs> and i eat it and i'm like oh god this actually tastes like lemongrass so so yeah i mean but but i am the kind of person if i if you if you leave me even at a country like fair over here i will i will discover something which which will blow my mind and i will be so fascinated i'm like oh my god what deep fried butter wow <laughs> that's so, awesome yeah, that's that's me that's <laughs> so restaurants and you on like a bazillion of them <laughs> and probably know. probably more what's who's What's been the most memorable customer and what's been the most worst customer you've had? You know what the worst customer pretty much um has been um you know we were closing at at around 2:30 for lunch and there's a big group of people who walked in and they walked in um and and you know I hate to say it but they were Indians so when they walked in they had the sense of entitlement and we had a server who was you know who who was on the heavier side right mm -hmm. and they were they were so rude they they made it like they called like 
they called upon the fact that she was on the heavier side and right. that to both Vivek and me is unacceptable you are coming to our house and you think that you can disrespect anybody who's a part of our family we literally we asked them to leave it was a big table it was a table of 20 and we are like right. no you are not disrespecting anybody who works with us they're not working for us they're working with us so we ask them to leave and and that is something that both vivek and i have been very very clear about that we are never going to compromise on the dignity of the team that is working with us and we will never do that so that was one of the you know and we've had a couple of those right um right. the best customer <laughs> Taylor Swift. I'm just kidding. I mean, like, I, mean, I had to throw that in, right? Oh my God, oh, yeah. Kelly Clarkson, Taylor Swift. I mean, they are such incredibly down to earth people, nice. right? Kelly Clarkson. She came for lunch, and we was we were talking about poopy diapers. <laughs> But that is it. I mean, it's like just you know, in the end of the day, you realize that you know. humanity is is the most precious thing and somehow some somewhere along the way people people forget that everybody who's out there no matter how big they are in the end of the day they are human and it's a human interaction which matters the most that's true i was almost hoping uh, i'll be the worst customer if not the best one but it's okay i mean taylor so so bit me to it it's okay it's it's, it, it's fine you live with it right you yeah, live with it i live with you that's the plan <laughs> done done absolutely i'll go and start like uh, prepping the room yeah, yes. all right before you know, the 5 o'clock when the kids come and they're like good morning <laughs> hi maidens don't do it don't do it So Food Network, and you've been associated with the Food Network and Chopped. And so when you are with your family, uh, with your kids, uh, with your husband, and you put on the Food Network, and it's you uh, judging the contestant, how does how does that feel uh, to watch yourself? And how does how do your kids feel? Like oh, she's 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 there, and she's right here as well. Is it like very weird? You cool. know, there's that there is that Hindi saying which is like "ghar ki murgi dal barabar." <laughs> okay which is like you know what um translated it is you know chicken um, a chicken dish in india was considered like one of the most like upscale dishes like you would have it at special occasions only and dal is something that you would eat every day so basically you know the chicken dish that you have at home is as good as the dal so that's <laughs> basically what it is in you know um and a lot of the punch gets lost in um translation but yeah they are like yeah whatever like <laughs> sure they are like look i get the most i think i am the most excited i'm like look what is this on tv they're like yeah you are right over here also like yeah. so what like <laughs> whatever like yeah so um they don't i think when they when they are really really excited is when one of their friends Um, recognizes uh, me they're like oh we saw your mom on tv and they're like yeah yeah okay or um <laughs> my daughter she's hilarious uh you know she is uh, she thinks she only cooks because she is under the impression that she, there's a camera on her all the time so uh so that's why that's how she behaves but that's yeah it's it's just it's hilarious it's like that that's the entire thing they are like yeah whatever See that will change once I move in. It's gonna be like ah. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. About it, so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, you want to ask uh, the last question and we conclude? Yeah. Well, actually, I actually had a couple questions. So we need to talk oh, about oh, upcoming, yeah, pro- upcoming projects. I know you have a book coming out. Is it in October? October sixth. Uh, awesome. It's called Chat, Chat, and it's available for pre-order on Amazon. So yeah, so that's that's my two second ship, uh, shameless. Well, no, this, this, let's do the whole pitch. It's chat recipes from kitchens, markets, and railways in India. So, um, I'm like, super excited about this book. We've been researching you, obviously, but that book looks amazing. How many countries did you go to? Uh, it is so gorgeous. We actually went to India. Um, this is it's dedicated to all the street vendors in India who provide the most delicious and memorable food and the book even if i say so has so much movement in it it's so organic it is like going to india so i am i can't wait i i'm so excited i can't wait for you guys to like just see the book it's beautiful 
Oh, it's going to be great. That, that comes out October 6th. Oh, thank so, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're already been placed. All right. Ben Beer, could you seriously get yes. together, man? He's fan so hard. Move in <laughs> Please, I can live with that. It's doing wonders for my ego, man. I swear, I swear to God. <laughs> So, but we want to definitely thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, it's been a complete honor to have you. Before we we have we ask one last question. Um, so, when someone Google's you, what do you want your autocomplete to be? Mani Chauhan, badass female chef. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that comes up already, so I think you got it. <laughs> oh no, you know what comes up? Mani Chauhan, weight loss. Manit Chauhan, <laughs> husband. Uh, yeah, Manit Chauhan. Height. Height. Yeah. Height. Height. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That also comes up. <laughs> and you're like, so I just don't, I don't do that because then it, it really crushes, like it <laughs> crushes my ego. So yeah, that's what it is. That's fair. That's a great, that's a great answer. Well, thank you so much once again. Uh, we are super honored to have you here. Please check out your book. Uh, October 6th, Catch Her on Food Network Shop. And of course, please follow her. Her Instagram will make you hungry just watching it. I get hungry and it makes me want to eat all the time. I have to space out how often I check your Instagram just so you know. Oh my God. Okay. I, I also put in the walks in the morning. Yeah, okay, so but that I really can't. I balance it off. I balance <laughs> it off. You eat and then you go for a walk. Do Fair it, enough. do it, do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you, everyone. This is our show for today. Thank you. Guys, that was Mani Chauhan. That is an amazing episode. I am so glad to tell you guys that tomorrow I have booked my ticket already. Tomorrow I'm moving in with Mani Chauhan. I'm going to Nashville. Bye-bye, San Antonio. <laughs> uh, you can also catch Mani. Please follow her on Instagram. She has amazing stories about food that she's making during quarantine, but also uh, great exercises she's doing. So I absolutely love, love, love her Instagram. Please go check it out. Also, of course, you can catch her on Food Network's Chopped, uh, a ton of amazing shows. And uh, they also have Chopped After Hours, which I highly recommend. That's where the judges go, and uh, they all cook something different. So that's actually kind of fun. All right. I think we're at the end of the show. Um, like always, please like and subscribe below. Um, and if you really like it, please share it with your friends, family, and enemies. All right. This has been another great episode of Nobody Meets Somebody. Till next time, see y'all later.